Now, I've been asked to kind of just give you a little bit of uh, uh, an overview of my uh, journey into impact investing and a little uh, uh, insight into to what I'm doing. So I have prepared a few slides and uh, I assume, um, I'll just check here to make sure I know how they work. Okay, so uh, we'll start out by asking the question, and I think many of you know the answer. Others may be in the learning mode, and that is, you know, what is impact investing? And um, for me, it really began uh, a journey, you know, about, about 15 years ago, where uh, as an entrepreneur, um, I wanted to be more effective in uh, giving back because I've been blessed with uh, so many great things in my life. And uh, impact investing, I think, is the answer. Impact investing really is, in essence, doing good while doing well. And uh, I believe that um, uh, there are many ways uh, and many forms of impact investing, and it's uh, really a, a continuum from very early stage companies to um, companies that are institutional grade investments that provide great impact in the world today. So why am I here? I, I talked a little bit about my um, uh, experience as an entrepreneur um, and as an entrepreneur I I found that um, some of my greatest successes although I wasn't aware of them at the time were really uh, impact investments and uh, or companies that, that, that generated great impact in the world an example is uh, sorts and communications which is which is the largest uh, company that provides services for, for the deaf and was instrumental in uh, a service that enabled the deaf to communicate with the hearing through uh, sign language interpreters uh, in real time over the internet. And uh, it literally transformed the way that they were able to uh, communicate and enabled them to be, to have uh, capabilities more uh, closely to their hearing peers. And this company was a successful company. It grew um, from zero in uh, uh, 2003 to over uh, 120 million in, in revenues in 2005, uh, generating uh, about uh, 60 million in EBITDA that year and uh, ultimately was sold uh, to produce a, a tremendous uh, exit. But I think the most important part of the company it, and, and, the, and the services that it provided was that it enabled about a million deaf people to be able to uh, communicate uh, in a different way and to be much more uh, effective. Um, and it was this underserved community that benefited and every dollar of revenue that was generated uh, really was related to uh, the service that it provided and, and the impact that it had on that uh, community. It also uh, uh, provides uh, and is one of the leading uh, uh, employers for, uh, for deaf. And so with this great success, I really started looking at um, you know, how could I give back and how could I be more effective? And I've been familiar with the traditional grant-based, relationship-based model that is uh, prevalent in, in philanthropy today and was not really satisfied with that. I, I saw that as very inefficient uh, in terms of the actual dollars that ultimately went to the purpose. And um, it, it really didn't um, reach scale uh, in solving the problems that I felt uh, were really necessary with the tremendous uh, ills that we face in society today. So I remember the adage that you can teach a man, uh, you can give a man a fish and, and he's fed for a day, you can teach a man how to fish and, and he's fed for his lifetime, and then I added you can teach a man how to teach others to fish and they're fed for their lifetime, and that was really kind of the, the, um, the, the, the philosophical um, underpinning of 
how I wanted to be able to give back. And it meant giving not only of my um, financial resources, but really of what I'd learned and the experience that I had as an entrepreneur in um, uh, you know, finding solutions in a market-based uh, economy that could become scalable and self-sustaining, but that had social impact, that addressed problems in the world. And, and from that, I started looking for opportunities on how to uh, use my resources and my, my personal experience and background in a way that would create impact. I think one of the first areas was in the area of microfinance, and I won't go into a lot of detail because we don't have a lot of time, but really, I, I, I think one of the very uh, first areas that, uh, uh, and it started out as philanthropy uh, because there weren't for-profit entities that were, that were microfinance institutions at the time, and through an organization called Unitas that would go out and find the very best uh, MFIs, these are, these are essentially uh, organizations or, or, or banks that provide uh, capital to those that are that are underbanked or are unbankable in the world, very small loans to enable them to build businesses and livelihoods. And um, uh, Unitas found that that by mentoring and finding the very best MFIs, that ultimately they became profitable. And in order to have access to greater capital to enable them to the, to grow they needed to convert to for-profit entities. And, um, and once that was done, then uh, really there was a much greater uh, availability of capital out there to help them in, in their growth. And, and indeed, that was the case. Uh, one enterprise grew from uh, 20,000 clients to 200,000 clients in a couple of years. They were non-profit, then 200,000 converted to a for-profit then in the next four years grew from 200,000 to six and a half million clients. And th these are people that are, are building businesses that are generating income that, that most of them are women that, uh, that are supporting families and, uh, and, and, and educations. And uh, ultimately this, uh, this company went public at a $1.7 billion market cap uh, and was a tremendous investment and had tremendous impact. So this has grown over the last uh, really decade um, and has become known as, uh, as impact investment, investing. Uh, I also refer to it as impact philanthropy because uh, I think there's a real key role for philanthropy in this space in the very early stages, like the example that I just gave you, and uh, has now uh, captured, I think, the attention of uh, investors uh, and particularly the next generation because it's the next generation, the millennial generation, generation X, that uh, have a much greater um, interest and uh, they see social good in their, in their businesses and investing with, uh, in businesses that, that uh, as that is a, as a, an important criteria that uh, will inherit the massive wealth transfer over the next uh, uh, few decades. So as I have become personally involved, I've looked at the barriers and where I could contribute in this space. And uh, I think uh, my experience has always been in early stage enterprises, very entrepreneurial businesses, often disruptive uh, technologies or services and uh, putting teams together, helping uh, them to grow and, and ultimately uh, become successful. And uh, I found that in this space, uh, in the social enterprise space, that there really was kind of a gap where uh, financial resources were scarce and, and human resources were really difficult to find. Funds and investors we're typically looking for deals that uh, were less risky or had more uh, proven uh, you know, history and, and uh, uh, experience behind them before they'd invest or engage to even do the due diligence. And uh, I'd become uh, quite involved at the University of Utah in experiential education 
in helping to establish the largest student-run venture fund. And this venture fund provides students with uh, an experiential education that enables them to, to understand and learn all of the processes to underwrite venture investments. That's the due diligence, the market research, the investment underwriting, the um, basically uh, negotiating the terms. Uh, and this fund, I think, has provided an unparalleled uh, education for over 250 students over the last decade and provided really, I think, <coughs> the genesis for really taking that to the next stage and developing a center for students that would be endowed to give them an education in this space. But even, I think, more important, uh, uh, provide really very early stage human resources, human capital, to be able to help, uh, whether it be uh, uh, social entrepreneurs or very early stage investors or foundations that are making uh, program related investments and, and, and need uh, to be able to have uh, a resource in the due diligence and the market research and uh, in the, uh, the underwriting of the investments to, to make good decisions. And, uh, so the, the, the center at, uh, at the University of Utah, the Sorensen Global Impact Investing Center, was really established for that purpose. And uh, I think now is helping uh, foundations, uh, family offices, corporations. Uh, it certainly has helped my foundation uh, in making uh, you know, many uh, impact investments uh, since its inception uh, while giving students uh, an unparalleled education and preparing the next generation of professionals in this space that uh, will be needed. This slide, uh, I think, illustrates uh, some of the, uh, the services and the experience that students are getting. And um, uh, th it's the same center that has become quite involved uh, in the pay for success area of very innovative uh, social finance that I think you'll learn more about in the conference. Um, I'm going to just kind of finish up here by you know giving you an idea of some of the results from this. These are some of the, the companies that uh, for me personally uh, have been uh, either sourced uh, or the, the uh, the investments have been uh, due diligence and, and the underwriting has been greatly assisted by uh, the work of the center. And these range everywhere from, um, uh, you know, access to energy, to um, livelihood development, to uh, uh, access to health and uh, low income housing, attainable housing, um, I mean, there's, there's quite an array of social purposes that are consistent with my foundation and, and the, the, the goals and, and vision that we have that uh, are beginning to grow and scale. Uh, and through the work that they've done, uh, over 12 million investments have been made and, and a, a 100 million in follow-on investments have been, uh, have been made in entities that are growing and scaling throughout the world. So this is an area that I feel very passionate about. It, it, it's what um, uh, keeps me, um, I think, uh, excited each day. I'm spending probably 70% of my time in this area. And uh, I think there's a quiet revolution that's going on uh, in the investment world today and in the world of philanthropy um, and uh, in the world of the, the, the providers of social good out there that uh, uh, is embodied by impact investing. And uh, I'm so grateful to be able to see the tremendous interest from those that are here today. Great, thank you. Thanks.